Hey, welcome to the Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. We are your hosts, Eric Sturgeon. And I'm Russell Sorry. This podcast is about all things Wisconsin, history, music, culture, and beer. Although we don't often use strong language, the content is not intended for young audiences, so listener discretion is advised. If you love the bluegrass music you hear in this intro, please check out Dang It's from Madison, Wisconsin by visiting their website, dang-its.com. Now on to the show. Hey, welcome back to Wisconsin Drunken History. Your weekly dose of the Dairy State again. I am your, I'm one of your hosts, Eric Sturgeon. And I'm Russ Sari. Awesome. Hey, have you ever had Jolly Good Soda? Because that's what we're talking about today. Heck yeah. And it is a absolute Wisconsin staple. Uh, this is a delicious drink from right in our own backyard, consumed in most of our backyards. Uh we have great Wisconsin music today from a band called Fuzzy Surf. We have another Baru review, another edition of the infamous How Many Locals You Got. Yeah, so uh, that's become pretty routine at this point, huh? We also have a special interview with somebody uh, that y'all might have seen uh, either on Discover Wisconsin or maybe you've heard her on. The Cabin Podcast. Uh, this is uh, Mariah Haberman, and uh, we're very excited. So yeah, definitely. Hey, remember to uh, like, rate, review, subscribe, comment, all of that stuff uh, on uh, our social medias or wherever you choose to listen to the podcast. Hit the bell on YouTube to be uh, reminded of when we drop new content, uh, which is um, pretty routinely every Sunday morning. Yep. However, we will have a lot more... Uh, random content videos and stuff coming out as we uh, have some warmer weather, which, hey, it's been pretty nice out. Yeah, we're, we're definitely looking at doing some Patreon videos and like just yeah. how, how to make of true old fashioned, some weird of which, historical. Russ just sort of dropped the bomb, but we are going to be uh, introducing a Patreon uh, in order to uh, kind of help just, you know, give us some funds to do a little bit more of this fun stuff for you. So, you know, as much as you enjoy just hearing us talk, uh, we are going to be doing a lot more uh, uh, live events, doing a lot more filming and that sort of stuff. Yeah, we got a lot of cool segments that we are recording as we yeah, speak. So. We want to do bits uh, for you guys, uh, little sketch comedy things that uh, should, and a Patreon really just helps us kind of uh, secure a little bit more of a fund to be able to provide that cool content for you. So uh, look forward to that. Uh, somewhere on our social media pages, we will announce that as it comes out. Um, but also, hey, we want to hear from you. Let us know what you want to hear. If you want to hear a certain band, if you guys want to hear a certain topic, if you all want to hear uh, or have us review a certain beer or talk to a certain brewery, uh, let us know. I yeah, mean, that's, we're open. That's the open line of communication for you all. So definitely let us know. Also, our email is wi drunken history at gmail.com exactly and honestly we we're, we're definitely not looking for money if you can't afford the patreon the next best thing you can do is just share with a friend tell them to come check it out during the wisconsin history you absolutely know? that's the other thing word of mouth definitely as we understand is one of the strongest forms of uh of marketing there is so if you enjoy shout it to the passenger on the uh, mta as we were sitting there you know um, so the, uh, uh, the, the main story today again is, uh, the jolly good sodas, Russ, uh, take us in here, but what do we got? Yeah. So before we begin, I, I wanted to have a quick discussion with my uh, co-host here. Oh, back to me. I got All right. It. Sounds good. What do we got? So I know for me, it was always pop from my grandma's Yeah. and then it was soda at home. What did you guys call in your household? Mix of both again. Yeah. It was a mix so, bowl. Uh, uh, Soda was more commonly referred. It was more commonly referred to as soda, I think, by my parents. But friends, uh, it was pop. So anytime we were over at like a friend's house, again, I, I hate to say it, my family's actually from Illinois. Okay. So my okay. dad was uh, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky. Uh, established a lot of his life there in Illinois. My mom, born and raised Illinois. Uh, so when we moved to Wisconsin in 19 
90. That was like the first that they had ever been in Wisconsin uh, living. Okay. So, okay. you know, my family's more soda, but everybody that I know and all the friends that we established and made kind of in this state uh, all pop. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering. I know that debate has been ongoing forever. Oh, I've, for sure. I've heard both. I mean, like I said, I've, I I was in my grandma at the summer, so I heard pop a lot. But then also, you know, from a lot of Milwaukeeans say soda. I mean, if, if you take a look at the survey, Milwaukee seems to be soda oriented. So I feel like south, south of Milwaukee probably says pop. I feel like once you get up to the Milwaukee, Waukesha uh, counties, it's probably soda. And the minute you get any north of probably Milwaukee, Waukesha, the Dodge, you know, some some of these exactly more yeah. local. Yeah. yeah. The, then you're back to hearing pop again. So we're going to talk about this legendary soda that I'm used to drinking. So when I was a kid growing up, um, we never had like a ton of money, right? I mean, we, we yeah. were kind of on, you know, we were like lower middle class people for sure. growing up for in sure. that area. And uh, one thing I remember was budget sodas. I mean, there was Grandpa Graff's. You remember Grandpa Graff? I don't. Beer? Mm-hmm. So we had Grandpa Graff's and we had Jolly Good was the two that my mom would go to because they were cheap, there affordable. Was, there was one other one too. There was Wild Frank's. Wood. Frank's always had another one too. And Frank's is uh, the grocery store that we had down in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Uh, they, I believe they also had a store in uh, Jefferson as well. But hey, uh, Jolly Good was always kind of the run to though. Yeah, everyone kind of in Wisconsin kind of jumped to Jolly Good. Because you had cans and you had uh, the two liter bottles as well. But yeah, you know, growing up in the early 90s, I remember my mom going to Piggly Wiggly. And what she would do is they had uh, cardboard crates that you could mix and match. So you could get 24 for oh, wow. like different ones. And I remember all these flavors that were just awesome as a kid. And what the hell Piggly Wiggly was she going to? The one that was by... Um, Delavan and I think Lake Geneva have it. It was... Uh, Steinbrinks. Up the road from uh, Frank's actually. It, it, was cent- it was Century, but it was Piggly Wiggly oh, before that. Oh, wow. It was, pi- it was Piggly Wiggly before that, I believe. I only remember the Century. So yeah, that's yeah. It was to me. It was old school. Also, like Frank's a, wasn't always Frank's. Frank's was actually uptown originally. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's some old school Elkhorn history for you. So. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, a, a story that I remember my mom telling me was my aunt, and I'm not going to name her name because I don't want to embarrass her, but sure. when she was a little kid, Wildwood was the big dog. And it's still around today. You can get Wildwood. But my aunt would drink so many because they were so good that it became known as the Wildwood Squirts. Ooh. And it's kind of like, like she would drink you so, overdose on like you sugar. You way and too much sugar. Your body wants to expel it as quickly as possible. Exactly. And so when I was growing up, Jolly Good was the brand because it was the Wisconsin cheap soda was just phenomenally tasting. But my mom used to call them having the Jolly Good squirts in our house. And I remember <laughs> that. Like, I just had to tell that story because I thought it was really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any memories growing up with Jolly Good? Yeah. Uh, again, you know, I probably won't name drop, but uh, we had... Uh, my, my parents had their best friends as we were growing up and they had kids as well. You know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll at least name drop, uh, Ethan, Ethan, Cook, oh, yeah. yep. Ellie. Ethan and Ben. Yep. I didn't know those were, very those well. were my best friends. My parents, uh, were best friends with their parents and, uh, we would go over either to their house or they would come over to our house and we were just sucking back jolly good. Like it was, you know, going out of style. <laughs> and, and honestly, you know, it, God, what was it? I, there was a funny story where their mom would say, you know, like, what color soda do you want or something like that instead of flavor? It purple. Didn't even, yeah, exactly. I want the purple. <clears throat> so <laughs> Yeah, heck yeah. Even even today, though, my favorite is is probably either the cream soda or the root beer. Do you remember the pina colada? Yeah, for sure. That was a great one, too. I love that one. I mean, they're amazing flavors I love out them. of these soda pops. And they were so affordable. And like I said, we were like lower middle class. I mean, we weren't like poor, but we were struggling, you know, so it was nice to have good soda in the house. Same, once in a while. same with us. I mean, so. you, you know, you, you always have you pay off one. You, you pick and choose your battles with when yeah. it comes to bills. What can we afford to... Uh, let roll over one more month. Yeah, that's pretty what much. What one do we have to pay right now exactly. to avoid getting something shut off? That was how we were. But yeah, I just wanted to do that because that was just one of my favorite childhood memories. I mean, I remember growing up in the '90s, you know, watching Nickelodeon, sucking down Jolly Good. You know, yeah, it was just ba- a good time. Man. That was Ninja back Turtles. When Nickelodeon was halfway decent. Yeah, Ninja Turtles were still on the air. Yeah, like, yeah, you for know, sure. it was just a good time. It was just good memories all around. Yeah, growing up as a '90s kid in Wisconsin was awesome. So unlike many of the other soda companies of the day. This company was not started due to prohibition. Oh, wow. But was originally started in the canned vegetable industry. 
Then J.B. Cryer, who was born in Belgium, Wisconsin, they started in 19, 1908 as a small farming company in the Belgium area. So J.B. Cryer created the Cryer Preserving Company in 1913, and originally the plant was built to, to can beets, peas, sauerkraut, corn, and beans. However, in 1931, they also added things like soups, juices, spinach, carrots, and spaghetti to the production lines. And in 1935, Cryer Foods opened up a second branch, which is now located in the Random Lake, Wisconsin area. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. In 1935, where it's actually still in use today. But one of the stories about the facility that during the first days of production in this plant, a tornado came and actually took out the facility in the beginning before they even had a chance to start off. And it was forced to be rebuilt again. I hope they had insurance. Yeah, Yeah, I hope so, too. As we have talked about, due to Wisconsin brutal winters, vegetables are only limited to a certain time of year here in Wisconsin. Yeah. This left the company to be slow in the winter months and early spring until more vegetables would be ready to be canned. So in response to Wisconsin's extreme weather, they thought they that hey, let's 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 can soft drinks. We have yeah, a there's... canning facility and even packaged Coca-Cola company for a period in the 60s. So oh, okay. Jolly Good and Coca-Cola have some history. Yeah. And due to the well-established and long-lasting companies like Roundies and larger canning operations, it's a very lucrative business. Cryer and other small businesses began to lose traction in the small canning operation in which they had. So in the 1960s and 70s, Ray Cryer and the company decided to focus on soft drinks and created their own soda line that we all know today as Jolly Good. Jolly and by the 1980s, yeah, it's so good. And by the 1980s, the company solely focused on soda production. In the 90s, the era I remember as I was just a little guy, and they had 50 varieties of soda. Yeah, I mean, honestly, endless. I think my favorites, honestly, though, were the uh, pina colada, cherry, grape, and the sour power. Holy oh, sour, yeah, sour, sour power, power was, was like awesome. mellow yellow or something. It was so good. It was like good. their version of it, yeah. It was um, so good. God. Now, yeah, now that you're mentioning it, man, I think I had a lot of the, the normal grape, orange, uh, yeah, those two were great. Yeah, And then yeah. also, like I mentioned before, cream soda and root beer. Oh, the cream soda was so good. Dude. There is nothing like having a good cream soda or a good root beer. Oh, I love root beer. Like I was talking about earlier too, is uh, Grandpa Graff's was another memorable, like memorable uh, See, Milwaukee. And Grandpa Graff's is one of those ones that it, now that you mention it a couple times, maybe I remember them for root beer. Dude, Grandpa, yeah, Grandpa Graff's was a root beer. He had a sweet fedora on and a huge mustache on the can. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So at the peak of production in this time period, they had distrib- distribution throughout the Midwestern states, including Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, and of course, right in our backyard, Wisconsin, yeah. which was their home. So Our, our POS neighbors. <laughs> I love visiting them all. I know. Just like, so you know. Illinois is the only one that I'm like, ah, hell. Illinois. I gotta drive to Illinois. You know, I it's don't hate them that much because I, I have a lot of friends down there, but at the same time, it's I have like, a lot of family there. I know. I <laughs> I don't, you my know, my brother still lives there, and they're not all bad. But I do not appreciate them coming up here and destroying our nat- like our natural resources, which they do often. You were about to say national parks or something. Yeah, like. even or the what national were you parks, say? like national parks, natural. Like I just, I, I, I love that they give the money, but I don't like how they treat Mother Nature. I've always, I'm I've be always honest. loved the fact that they, that they bring their their money in in here, and that's you know one of those things that you can always thank you know thank them for. But you know Indiana and uh, uh, Minnesota. Eh, Iowa, who travels there? There's no reason to go I there. I mean, see the house from, uh, you know. I think but, the yeah. I, th- I think the story that put a really bad taste in my mouth with Illinois is one time I saw a couple. We were the only two on the trail. It was us, me and Rachel, and another couple. And they're from Illinois. And I saw them drop their dog crap on the trail and leave it in a Wisconsin national, in like our natural resources national park. And I was like, it just put a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. And ever since then, I've I've really had a... Love hate for Illinois because I have a lot of friends down there, but at the same time, it's like yeah, Wisconsin has become uh, Illinois' dumping ground, you know. And it's like it's it's really sad. I mean, I'm glad they spend their resources, but at the same time, clean up your dog shit and they and like, hey, take it home with you. And, and as long as they keep buying this jolly good stuff and other things that we produce here, yeah, you know, pretty good. So back to the story. In 2007, again, the soda company felt the squeeze from the large corporations like Pepsi and Coca Cola. Cryer decided to end production of this masterpiece as I sucked down as a kid. But they continued Cryer Foods Company doing what they originally did. And this is not the end of the story, however, because Bruce Cryer, who was in charge of the company at the time, and his nephew, John Rassel, had talked about the, the soda and why it did not exist, exist anymore. 
They discussed the possibility of bringing back to the Midwest. Unfortunately, Bruce Cryer died before he could see the legacy come back to life, but fifth generation John Rassel would buy back the company in 2015 and began working on this fizzy beverage back into the hands of kids and nostalgia adults in 2013. The company celebrated its 100 years of business, which is awesome. It's John coming back. Russell. Jo- Jolly Good's coming back, baby. WrestleMania. That's a sweet name. I actually remember WrestleMania is what yeah. you guys used to call me all the time. Uh, man, Nate uh Nate Hansen, uh, our our good friend uh of uh, Hansen Screen Printing, uh he makes a really cool shirt. Uh about WrestleMania, which is pretty rad. I want to get one now because that's sweet. Yeah, I'll I'll talk to him about getting uh, hooking us up for all right. <laughs> uh, he hey, again. He's a great friend of the show, by yeah, the way. Definitely. Hey, you guys need anything screen printed or now embroidered? He has an embroidery machine. He's got everything there now. Uh, Sweet. He makes uh, some really cool stuff. Also, uh, just a really quick shout out for him. If you want mobile style production at an event that you're throwing, so let's say you want cool new screen printed stuff right on site at like. Uh, a wedding that you're doing or like a kid's birthday party or something like that. He's got this cool new thing called pedal press, which is literally a three wheel bike bicycle with a print or a, uh, um, a screen printing press on the back. That's sweet. Where he'll literally push the ink right onto these t-shirts live for you in front That's of awesome. you. Awesome. So that so we're gonna fit, conclude the story for today. So after testing out in stores and getting them back into distribution since 2018, 138,012 packs have been sold. Holy smokes! Today only eight of the original flavors are back, including grape, cherry, pina colada, oh, blue yeah. raspberry, sour power, fruit punch, cream soda, and orange, which are all like the best ones. Yeah. They Damn, also dude. have six diet flavors. If you have a chance, pick them up, and they're like pretty much in through the Midwest distri- distribution again, yeah, like including Triggs. stores like Triggs, Piggly yeah. Wiggly, Sendix, and Woodman's, so you can get them today. And yeah, we recommend most, it. Most areas, Milwaukee area, Sendix is huge. Woodman's is also huge. Uh, Triggs, that's up north more. Um, Piggly Wiggly, again, kind of that whole mid part of the state is all basically piggly yeah. wiggly southern to mid so but it's so cool to bring it back a nostalgia from yeah. the 90s like i'm i've bought some recently and it's great i would go yeah hey guys go out get yourself a a nostalgic pack of uh your favorite flavor jolly good is just great instead of being an icp dude and getting fago snag a jolly good yeah, and be a wisconsin fago. fago's known with the with the insane clown posse yeah we don't need that just go grab some jolly good get some jolly good feel like a you know eight-year-old again living free all right, we have another music segment for you today, and this one is from the Milwaukee area. It is a band called Fuzzy Surf. They are an amazing uh, indie kind of surf rock. Uh, p- yeah, punk-ish. indie I mean, like, pop. Yeah. I know, Eric. You thought they reminded you of a band. Do you want to? Yeah, the Shins. Uh, Gar- yeah, I the Garden that. State soundtrack is like. I, just like the vocal processing, I just thought it was really yeah, rad. Yeah, you know, actually another one that kind of reminds me of is Real Estate, if you haven't checked yeah. them out, kind of in that genre. No, they're really good. It's it's crazy that they're from our area. Like I, you know, when we got the yeah. song, I was like, this is freaking phenomenal. It's so good. So, uh, And again, this is one of those ones that I, um, I say, hey, when music gets back up and going, you're going to want to see these guys. Uh, it, it, the music is just so damn infectious and fun that I, 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 can't imagine that there would be uh, a, a person standing still on the dance. I mean, right, you're right. going to have to move somehow. Jump, move, like throw a punch at a guy with your elbow. That's not a punch. That's elbowing. These guys need to be in Garden State, too. Damn, dude. Yeah. Zach, oh, Braff, yeah. Zach Braff hit him up. These guys are awesome. Out to him. Yeah, actually, we, we still have his contact info from the band we were in. Yeah. So we, we definitely should hit him up and tell him about these guys. Yeah. Um. But Fuzzy Surf, absolutely amazing. Infectious music. Uh, if you're into uh, good rock and roll, indie rock, uh, this is going to fulfill everything you needed. And again, the uh, fantastic musicianship. Uh, the art that goes behind this is uh, incredible. If you've never tried to write a song, uh, I mean, it is just incredibly difficult. Yeah. And to think about it uh, makes me nervous. Like, I just get <laughs> yeah, anxious yeah. about trying to even think about writing a song again. So uh, Fuzzy Surf, amazing Milwaukee band. 
This one that we chose is called I Don't Dream Anymore. So good. Again, that was Fuzzy Surf, Milwaukee band, <laughs> ridiculously good. I was just telling Russ uh, while listening to the song again that the walk on uh, the harmonic walk on the uh, what I believe is a telly. I don't know if they actually play a telly. It could be a jazz master too. Um, the that harmonic walk the that uh, reminded me a lot of Vampire Weekend. Oh yeah, kind of, it I got definitely a full does. Feel of Vampire yeah, Weekend. Yeah, you know they. This is another great band, man. Oxford Such Comma good. and just so yeah. many good songs. It's yes, just awesome. Oh, uh, Tokyo Police Club. Tokyo Police Club too. Oh, yeah. definitely. Awesome um, man. They're getting so a good. lot of vibes. Uh, cool, cool influences. Uh, you can tell just by the 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 music that they listen to some really solid tunes in order to get you know to create and shape their own sound so that was i don't dream anymore that was from fuzzy surf uh milwaukee definitely go check them out again hey if we have live music soon uh rip into uh uh, the milwaukee area to come listen to them at any one of our fine uh local independent stages because they need help and all these artists need your money as well uh, come and listen to their finely crafted musical arts. So we have a beer review today. Uh, this one actually comes from probably my favorite uh, Wisconsin uh, brew company. Uh, they're uh, absolutely amazing. These the, the, the brewer of this is One Barrel. Um, they're amazing. I absolutely love One Barrel. I still have yet to get the tattoo on my body. I was just going to say, you better get this to get our free keg, dude. You better do uh, that. And believe you me, I will 100%. I was just telling Andrea yesterday, I want some new tattoos. I'm going to have an artist friend of mine drop the the, uh, half sleeve that I want. 
Uh, and while I'm there for the half sleeve, you could guarantee I'm getting. Oh, you got to get the, the penguin. I'm getting the one barrel penguin uh, tattoo. <laughs> Sipping a couple well. brewskis. So yeah. yeah, today we're we're drinking the. Uh, it's called the Influencer IPA or India Pale Ale from uh, One Barrel Brewing Company. Coming in at six point five percent ABV, pretty good. Um, I just want to talk about the uh, art before I begin the uh, everything tasting. art about this. Yeah, it's it's a penguin uh, taking some selfies, and uh, you're gonna see the Coliseum, the Taj Mahal, Big Ben. You're gonna see the uh, Lady Liberty, like you know your standard things. You're gonna take pictures in front of the Eiffel Tower, and uh, yeah, it's 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 making front of that uh, Instagram influencer. Is, that, is deal. that Big Ben or is that the Alan Bradley clock? <laughs> <laughs> you know it's one I barrel know. so you never know but i think it's yeah. big ben i it, mean it definitely is big it's, ben, it's straight yeah. rigid like a big ben so yeah um but yeah no it's i a, love it it's definitely a well-crafted ipa um you're getting that like upfront bitterness that i love about the ipa highly carbonated very good um yeah uh, one of the things that i love about uh some of these ipas is that they also have that just the the note of like blueberry uh smell Oh, for sure. And one thing I wanted to state about uh, One Barrel Brewing Company is that they actually now have a, a place in Door County area. So if you're up in Door County, check out One Barrel. They're, they started in Madison as a small batch brewery, but they did open something in uh, Door County now. So if you're is out that on Egg like, Harbor, I believe it's over in Egg Harbor area. It's that's um, what I thought, but I, I again, I'm not really good with the. It's it's just a small brewery. I think it's a taste house brewery. I think yeah, as just, well. so exactly. It's, it's a tap room. But no, this one's really great. And a place you're not... to get their their merch and their beer, which is amazing. Because uh, Door County, even though I haven't been, I've I have not visited yet, uh, is is uh, one of the finer um, touristy areas of Wisconsin because it's not it's not a go to for Illinoisans. It's no, not, no, the Fibs don't necessarily travel there. They like Manaqua if they go up north. Lake they Geneva, like Lake Geneva if they're Wisconsin just coming a Dells, little bit. Dells, Bayfield. I mean, those are the Wisconsin, the Illinois. But the staples. cool thing about uh, Door County is that there's some amazing, amazing scenery. Uh, oh, yeah, the lake views, all that sort of stuff. It's it's different, and if you can enjoy a one barrel uh, brew uh, while you're looking out at the lake. <laughs> There, I, it, to me, it doesn't sound like there's much better. You know, I always call. I can't up the, wait till I have a camper and I can go up there and just, you know, it's swing Wisconsin a wine out. country, man. I mean, it there's is. like cherries. That's like true. Just, it is Wisconsin's wine country. Which, I mean, there's wow. so many wineries and wines and a lot of fruit that grow there because it's like a, a weird thing. So, like our our state gets very cold in the wintertime, but because Lake Gen- uh, Lake Michigan doesn't get as cold, it stays a little warmer there. Not not a lot. So it's a, it's like. All the humidity and water are very good for growing certain types of grapes and cherries. Yeah. So it's a huge. It's it's like Wisconsin's wine country. There's a lot of great breweries up there too. Like um, you know, obviously Door County Brewing Company. We got one barrel now who's actually up there. There's just so many things to see and do. And uh, Door County's awesome. But yeah, we we've been a one barrel fan since the beginning. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, like I said, one of it, it is probably my favorite uh, brewery in Wisconsin. By the way, and. Uh, every beer that I drink from them is uh, a hit. I just feel like they have really mastered uh, uh, brewing beer and and brewing um, really just delicious recipes that I, I mean... It's crazy that they do it in one barrel small batches and they make them so consistent. Like that brewer yeah. has to be on top of it at all the time. Right. I mean, like to make one barrel and have it taste the exact same, like the Penguin Pale Ale, they have to make oh. that taste the same every single time. And it's amazing. It's, it's so good. It's Absolutely. one of my favorites. And uh, this one is nice because I'm getting hints of citrus. I'm getting that bitterness from an IPA, but I'm not getting the like over pininess. It's actually like a very, very tasteable, very drinkable. It's fruity. Yeah, it's very it's, good. It's not like your light fruity. It's like this perfect IPA. Uh, there's a good a good bitterness unit. It's not it's not awful. Uh it's just such a good beer. It's like a light brown coloration. I mean, it's six point five percent. You're not going to get wrecked, um, but it's a very good one. It's it's hydrating, but you're getting also the bitterness like an IPA. But please go and check this one out, Eric. Where did you find this one? I know I've seen it in a, at Woodman's, I believe. Where have you seen this one at? I have no idea. You have no idea. Okay. I can't remember where I got this. Okay, but um, I swear I've seen it at Woodman's. I know I've yeah. seen it at Festival. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know at least those two for sure carry it. It's not like a hidden gem. Uh, 
anywhere you can find one barrel. The two places that I typically uh, go to for beers is uh, Total Wine, uh, which is probably where I got this, um, and then also Festival. And then there's one really awesome uh, beer and liquor store uh, down the road from my house in Wind Lake that is just, I mean, they typically do carry a lot of the um, Wisconsin stuff. Awesome. And, and maybe awesome. a little bit more of the obscure stuff that you can't find at like Total Wine or Festival. I but, know I I have been talking about this for a long time, but uh, we need to make a trip to Trader Joe's because I have like s- such weird Wisconsin beers I've never seen at any other place. Well, that's where I had that one Hillsboro uh, the other day. Yeah, just or, some uh, very strange a few brews. episodes ago or whatever. Yeah, it was. Um, definitely one of those ones that you're gonna uh, you, you get different flavors and different variety from different places. Uh, you know, Trader Joe's might have a certain uh, uh, niche or a certain brew that uh, that they work with versus, you know, what the all the larger ones that uh, Total Wine and a Festival work with or some just liquor stores. You know, yeah, exactly. Trader Joe's is cool. But yeah, again, this is called Influencer IPA. Pick it up at your local store and uh, let us know what you think. Now on to our infamous How Many Locals You Are. Wow. All right. <laughs> <That guy> wow. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh so this one is from Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. It is uh best known for the Line and Kugels Brewing Company. Yeah. However, uh they have a little different go something going on here. I'm gonna be honest, this one's a little crafty. This one's probably uh, the One the of most artful. Fun. Yeah, uh, this guy crafty. definitely knows his way around a Michael's hardware or a, a Michael's craft store. He's been to Joanne Fabrics a few times. He's been to Joanne's. It's uh, clear. So, uh, the Chippewa Falls Police Department says that Officer Scott Schoenwitter arrested a man Friday night for a fourth offense. The Quattro he hit the Quattro. Uh, a fourth offense OWI and found fake license plates that were made out of what would you say these are? Oh, God. These are the finest crafted hams, <laughs> hams beverage company license, license plates. plates. Sweet. Your your finest piece of uh, cardboard <laughs> oh my uh, cut into the shape of a license plate, uh, leaving nothing but the hams logo. Uh, and there, he actually cut out the holes too, so they mount perfectly the and everything. Holes, they yeah. look just like it. I mean, this was drilled into a, a license plate. Somebody like took their time on this one, so. honestly. This is crafty. So the uh, officers noted that the plates did not match the vehicle. Yeah. Of course. Well, <laughs> I think I think. What vehicle do Ham's boxes match? Man. So the officers found the fake plates were carefully hand-painted onto the back of a cardboard Ham's beer case. <laughs> Oh, so, so we actually painted numbers on it. So wow, looked, yeah, I know. Shit. Like I said, he took his time on these. I mean, the the picture is showing the officer holding We're the hams. Seeing They're the seeing the hams part. portion. But on oh, the other wow. side, he actually hand painted the Wisconsin logos and everything on there. Oh shit! Yeah, I know. See? This guy went like next level, Michaels. I was I was definitely thinking that uh, the hams was the part that was showing. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That shows a lot oh, about God. me. So, you know, yeah. it, it's crazy because you're right. I mean, he probably had to spend a lot of money at Michael's to get enough arts and crafts supplies to actually paint these things. Yeah. Good I mean, ac- like, acrylic style paint, maybe even like a, a finishing spray to go over the top to keep it weatherproof or something like that. Wow. That shows a lot of craftiness and in, 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 ingenuity. I it mean, stinks it, that he got caught because this guy is crafty, dude. I mean, like to get your fourth, I mean, he's has some experience. Uh, we but, don't really got an age or anything, though. But what I will say is, uh, this is clearly, uh, th- this is this is criminal thinking. He had to go out of his way to craft this idea that I'm gonna create and and artistically make these uh, <laughs> fake plates. Um, yeah, for sure. And then it shows that he's an alcoholic because guess what? He used Ham's cardboard boxes, which only an alcoholic drinks Ham's. <laughs> it's what, $9 for a 30 rack of beers? I think it's for a cube, a 36 or Son of like a nine bitch. bucks. I know. This was- $9 and, uh, uh, and, and what he did was that's all he had in front of him. He didn't have paper or other product in order to paint on. So 
I'm telling you, this screams to me uh, criminal behavior, criminal thinking, uh, alcoholic artisan, artisan. He's an alcoholic artisan. I mean, we got some details. I mean, we know that he has his fourth OWI. He's a younger guy. Uh, yeah, and, and bail jumping. And bail jumping. So he's a younger guy Recent. that just gets into trouble sometimes. So, yeah. I mean, it, you know, we don't have a lot here, but what would you say on the local level? Because he's, he's doing some arts and crafts, yeah, so this, we got to think about this Well, one. he didn't do the arts and crafts, I don't think, right before. I don't think he was doing the arts and crafts while he was drinking, for sure. No, he was sober when he did that, but he just thought it was funny. He's probably laughing while he's doing it. This guy's yeah. like smart. He's just trying to out-trick the law, you know? So, uh, yeah, I'm, I am definitely in the mid the mid-range. I think this is... Um, I, I got my number in my head. I, see, I'm tossed. I am torn. I'm, I'm thinking torn it's it's going to be two a, numbers. I'm thinking it's 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 probably in the double digits, like just breaking double digits for me. See, I'll just tell I'll tell you. I okay. think it's twelve to sixteen. I thought it was a twelve. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking twelve from the beginning. I mean, it's just a younger guy. I would love know. to. I would love to put this guy at a fourteen. You know what? To though? split our difference technically. As much as I don't appreciate that he got a DUI and he got in some trouble and you know, but I literally want to meet this arts guy. Yeah. Like, it's so cool. It's yeah. so crafty. I would also love to see the other side. I wish, yeah, I wish they weren't showing just the ham side. Just the ham's of. box. Like, <laughs> yeah. I would love to see the the actual Wisconsin Dairyland license plate that he, this guy handcrafted. I think it's um, more impressive and crafty to me. Yeah. That, that's why I want to meet this guy. For sure. So, I, so I'm, you think a 12 local, are we going 12? I'm going 14. You want 14? So let's meet in the split, middle then. I think to split my 12 to 16 and your 12, I think 14 is close enough. Let's do a 14 local 14 on this 14 and uh, that, that's, that's the end all be all. All right. Today we're here with Mariah Haberman. How are you doing, Mariah? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Not too bad. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, Discover Wisconsin in the uh, Cabin Podcast? We just like to know, like our listeners, just to get them out there and like learn a little bit more about it. Right. We're huge fans yeah. of, of both. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Well, so Discover Wisconsin is, well, it kind of started, or it did start as a TV show back in 1987. It was actually the idea of Discover Wisconsin was born on a fishing boat, which I find very fitting. Our late founder, uh, was actually a fishing guide up north and was friends with Tommy Thompson before Tommy became governor and sure. they came up with this crazy idea to start a TV show that they wanted to be about all things Wisconsin tourism, not just hunting and fishing. So they did exactly that. They started the show and from there they uh, developed a radio show in the early 90s. Obviously dot com came on in the 90s as well and now we have a podcast, we have a merch line. It's kind of just been this evolving brand over 35-ish years that is really all about discovering the people and places of Wisconsin. Awesome. I mean, like, it's, it's so cool that we have somebody like you, like, just talking us through Wisconsin because it's, you know, I've lived here my whole life. And uh, mm -hmm. you don't know a lot about Wisconsin until you actually watch or, like, listen to this stuff. You know, yeah. it's like... yeah. There's so much history and so much cool things to do here that nobody knows about. And I'm so glad you guys are doing what you're doing. Oh, my gosh. And you want to know what my favorite part of this is when I'll go around to, you know, we used to do premiere parties where we would premiere our video or episodes in um, all, you know, all the different towns across Wisconsin. And without fail, almost every time I get the locals coming up to me saying, we had no idea this was in our backyard. We had no idea that park was down the road. It's, I have, um, we, we air our show, well, now with streaming all across the world, but with the broad, you know, with the broadcast element being here in Wisconsin, it's amazing to me how many Wisconsinites are just excited about discovering things in their own backyard. I, I think that's just awesome. Yeah. And, and honestly, traveling is uh, the, the one thing that's going to help you go as far mm -hmm. north as you can, as far west. I mean, it's just amazing yeah. the different areas of Wisconsin and the different things that you experience uh, uh, due to the cultures that sort of uh, habitate there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Awesome. I'm a big, I love traveling in general. I'm the first one to hop on a plane to go yeah. anywhere, but I also think there's some amazing things to see just, just down the street. Kind of gotta yeah. look for them sometimes. I love it. So, so Mariah, we we're going to ask you too about the cabin podcast. I mean, I have an avid listener, but can you tell us a little bit how that got started? Well, so we had a radio show since 1993 and I came on board eight years ago and would host the, write the scripts and host it and, to be honest, it was very cumbersome. And I had, you know, once podcasts came on 
kind of the the scene, uh, me and my audio designer were like, we got to do this. This was like really early on in the podcast game. And we just kind of stalled on it, stalled on it, um, started to kind of dream up what we thought it would be. And then about a year and a half ago, I talked my CEO into letting me renovate one of the rooms in our building into this soundproof cabin studio. And um, we ended up converting at the same time our radio show into our podcast. So we kind of got we we got rid of the radio program. We decided that the podcast, as you guys know, is offers such an amazing format to be more candid and organic. Um, it's not really that scripted for us. We we do the outlines, of course, every week, but we try to kind of just let it flow. And that's one thing I it feels crazy saying this. So I've been on the show for eight years, but I find the podcast to be just a bit more fulfilling in that. Um, it isn't scripted and you can just kind of share that those behind the scenes moments where as much as I love the show, it's, it's a, a bit more templated. It's a bit more, you know, you, you're, you are given lines and you're told, you know, we're, we're, we know exactly where we're going to be and when, where it's the podcast is so much free flowing. And that I think has the team just has really had, we've had a really fun time, put, you know, creating that behind the scenes and just seeing the listeners react to it. We had no clue, like if anyone was going to listen. <laughs> so it's yeah, yeah. really awesome to, <laughs> that it's had its own following kind of separate of the tv show that's awesome yeah i i know for a fact that uh there's there's some crossover listeners from the cabin and discover wisconsin Mm -hmm. over to our show because one of them actually reached out to me and said hey i think this would be an absolutely organic conversation between uh, the Wisconsin drunken history in the cabin, if you could get you know any one of them on, which is why I initially even reached out because I felt like, I guess it isn't that big of a stretch. Let's, let's just reach yeah, out and see definitely. what we see. You know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Absolutely. And, and it's funny because everyone's like, oh, you guys have such like a negative title, but people do not realize how much history in Wisconsin is based off of beer. I mean, people <laughs> don't realize it. And we thought we would, we would kind of almost grab the listenership of uh, drunk history, which is, you know, more so yep. about just the the United States in general versus just Wisconsin. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, good grab. For yeah, sure. I love it. It's a, I think it's a genius title. I don't find it negative. I find it very fun. And you know, the the pod, podcast world is just so much more informal. And yeah. I think that's what has made it. You know, when they kind of first when podcast first became a thing, it was like, is this going to stick around? Is it a trend? Or and it's like now we see every other week someone starting a podcast, and yeah, I try for to be sure. super open to that. You know, I add as many as I can because I want to. You know, I, I think it's such an amazing medium, and um, yeah, I'm a, I'm an avid podcast listener. Every morning I get up, and I like I like that there's been more local ones like ours in your you know both of ours. It's to me, it's not just about what's going on nationally, but like what are the cool things happening right here again in our own backyard? Right, awesome. so much like you said candid just so much more candid mm-hmm. but awesome mariah before we let you go today we always have to ask our guest how wisconsin are you and i had to change a lot of these questions we because had to really tailored <laughs> for you because i know you've, <laughs> you've done, done pretty it. much everything on this list so i had it's, to really go wild really? on this one yeah and it's it's we'll it's see. filed like you you have them for us as proof <laughs> On on uh, I streaming know. video and for podcast that you've done most of the <laughs> things that we normally ask. You know there are still some things on my Wisconsin bucket list, so you guys might be able to trip me up here with what I you think, got on your on your list. I think we might have found some, but let's see. Okay. Let's All right, it. so Mariah, I know you were born around the same time we were, so uh, we remember Jolly Good. Did you have a favorite Jolly Good flavor that you drank? Um. Right. Growing up or right now? Just whenever. Hey, either. either. We'll take either. <laughs> Sour, Sour Power is for oh. sure my favorite because I like to mix it with my old fashioned mix. Oh, oh that sounds yeah. awesome. It's like adds a sweet or the sour flavor to it. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the best. It's the best. If, if you like old fashioned sours, which I love my old fashioned sweets too, but I'm a, a little bit more of a sour. Me too. Preference Sour Power is where it's at. Instead sour of like power. the squirt. Because, you know, you, you get. You get the squirt at at some of these uh, smaller restaurants. They just throw that in there. But sour power is a good. That's a good throw. I like that. I'm trying oh, yeah. to. You taste the difference. That's like the. That's like a true Wisconsin brandy. You know, what I mean? yeah. if you actually yeah. throw a jolly good in there. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. All the ingredients have to be Wisconsin. Absolutely. No more squirt. No All more right. squirt. I'm going sour power. 
All right. So I got a, I got a question. Um, this one we kind of ask a lot of our guests, but what do you consider to be up north Wisconsin? <laughs> oh, this is like this. These are this is always a, such a debate. We debated this on our podcast several weeks back, and we got a lot of <laughs> yeah. Um, north of twenty nine. Well, I don't know Highway Eight. If you're way up there, we we decided Highway twenty nine. Twenty nine. That's what we decided. That's actually that's, that's not a bad spot. I'm always the eight guy, like a little north of Rhinelander. Eight, yeah. But no, I I, 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 see, I see that argument. I, when I first started on the show, I thought to me like Wausau was the <laughs> north one. And the right, more right. I did the show, the more I and actually I emceed an event in Wausau early on in my career with Discover Wisconsin, and I that, I, that, I brought that up, like, where the Northwoods began, and the crowd literally started debating it, like, <laughs> while yeah. we were on stage, it was the funniest thing. That's, um, that's and yeah, sensitive yeah, territory. Kind of yeah, people are really heated. It's, like, yeah. more of a debate than, like, politics, I think. Oh, it is, <laughs> absolutely. Really, they want to know, like, if they, and they have strong opinions locals do up there, which, you know, there's some towns in the southern part of the state like Portage, and their tagline is literally where the North begins. Oh. So, which to us in Wisconsin, we're like, ah, eh, that's a bit of a stretch, Portage. But to <laughs> Chicagoans and folks out of state, like, you know, everyone kind of does define it a little bit differently, which is why this is such a fascinating debate, I think. Yeah. I and agree. I think Highway 8 has been mentioned more often uh, than, than most of the others. So it almost yeah. seems yeah, like that's, I, yeah. it's, it's a close, it's a close one. I can get on board with the Highway 8. I think I started for a long time saying 29, but the more time you spend up north, the more you're like, your caliber, your line of, <laughs> your line tends to go further north over time, at least for me. <laughs> That's actually a really good point. The more time you spend uh, north of Highway 8, the the more that you can appreciate the idea that that's really where the north begins. Or or yeah. I, w- I always say where 51 turns into a single lane down from the double sure, lane sure. is kind of where it's at. So, Yeah. All right, yep. so yep. next one, and I know you're going to probably have to debate this one a little bit. Do you have a favorite water park in uh, Wisconsin Dells? Or, or just, yeah, or just in general in Wisconsin. Oh, mm, I've never been asked this question. Um, um, You know, I was kind of always partial to Mount Olympus. I love Mount okay. Olympus. But I also, just I, I have fun memories with friends. So when people ask me, where my favorite what you know certain destination is a lot of times it's whatever i'm associating with like specific memory sure. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. but i also love you know i was just at the kalahari not too long ago and i have nephews and i just you know love seeing pictures of them having a, a good old time i'll be honest it's been a minute since i've even spent time at a wisconsin dells water park so yeah. um i'm overdue <laughs> now, that you, now that you guys are asking me I, that um and then noah's ark of course is like class. i'm not answering your question i'm answering i'm giving three yeah three you're giving answers three there. answers it's, <laughs> my memories are yeah yeah exactly so for it's it's funny because like now that i have kids it's like when i was single i always wanted to go to water parks but it's like getting a table for one at chuck e cheese when you're an adult man like they're not gonna they're gonna be like this is kind of weird yeah you know? based on memories <laughs> chuck e cheese is great but also yeah i don't know that i could just show up i kind of have to have a i'd have to bring my nephews that's it's the same for me like i don't feel yeah. uncomfortable anymore since i got a little guy you know yeah but yeah russ and i spent a uh, uh a weekend with the band back in the day when we had a band at uh the wilderness not the, the wilderness it was the wilderness it, was it, it the wilderness, wilderness. Yeah, so the yeah, wilderness. That was a good place and for some reason that one always just, it's just sticks more of in a my memory brain thing exactly so. exactly to your point uh it's a memory oh, thing so this isn't i mean i love the the water park at the wilderness but we actually did um a laser tag segment Ooh, that cool. I had way too much fun doing with my co-host. <laughs> we got very competitive and had like a shoot off. That one, that was actually a really memorable shoot. Again, we weren't at the water park, but the wilderness is amazing because they've got like every like everything. So, it's like Disney World. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> That's so movie. cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely fond memories. All right, th- this is another one that's going to be really tough for you. Do you have a favorite supper club? I know you've been to a supper club, Probably but do you have one that you recommend for our listeners? Mm. You know, it is really hard, I think, to beat the the food, the ambiance, and the view at Ishnala. Yeah, I mean, of course. It's, it's just so iconic. And the, 
and the drive back there just kind of gives me goosebumps as cheesy as that is by like just driving on that long windy road back into Ishnala and then like walking in and just like when you walk in the supper club you see that like panoramic view of Mira Lake it just I, yeah I, I love and they make amazing old fashions and really good dinner drinks I'm a huge fan huge fan of Ishnala awesome. yeah. but you're right you it's, hard. it's like taking a child <laughs> The that's child. that's a tough one yeah mm-hmm. all right so the next one i got and i got a couple more for you have you ever been to Summerfest? and do you have a memorable band that you saw there um so i have been to Summerfest. i was supposed to go for the first time when i was like 16 or 17 with my high school boyfriend and we got like all the way there and i realized i forgot the tickets at home <laughs> oh <laughs> that's a bummer sad <laughs> memory of like trying to get there and then not getting there um, but then I went, I don't know, this was, I don't maybe four or five years ago with a couple of friends of mine. We saw Bruno Mars. Okay. Oh, cool. Was yeah. Really fun. That was, yeah, that one was memorable. I mean, we walked around, of course, and saw lots of other acts, but like we were there to see Bruno. It was, yeah, that was, it was a big deal. That's yeah. awesome. Bruno's cool. All yeah. right. So next one I got yeah. for you, um, for beer brats, do you have a beer you recommend to try to, uh, based beer brats in? Ooh. That is another. Um, no, I mean whatever's in my fridge, I guess. That's, yeah, I, see, I'm that's the a, answer, Mariah. You <laughs> you I'm didn't a, even know, but that I'm was the mission, answer. I'm not a gourmet planner. It's like whatever I have. <laughs> even when I'm making like my old fashions or cocktails, I'm one of those people who's like rummaging through my fridge. Like I think that's maybe how the sour power thing happened. I was like, oh, I have. I got <laughs> 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 a supple, Here's half in a there. can of sour power. Let's down. go. Like, <laughs> cool. This yeah. is a, see, that's the thing is that you didn't even realize it, but that was the answer. It's whatever's the oldest beer and, in my refrigerator is what I'm using. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, what do I need to get rid of? I yeah. will say Liney's is usually in my fridge. Sure. Like, that's probably the beer that's most often. Um, yes, year like a more like year round beer that I most likely probably have somewhere in the back of my fridge. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, that I mean that's like a classic. It's a Wisconsin classic. It's been yeah. here for so long. Liney's original, Liney's in general. So yeah. All right, yeah. I got one more for you before we let you go today. Um, do you have Let's a favorite brewery tour that you've been to and uh, that you could recommend? It doesn't have to be in Wisconsin, preferably Wisconsin, but any of them are fine. Yeah, or even just favorite brewery. Uh, if they don't offer tours, that's also fine too because we know a few that don't. Yeah, I <clears throat> I don't know how – okay, so – there's two. Can I have two? Yeah. Is that okay? Can, yeah, yeah. Okay. You can have Let them both so more I'm if you gonna want. Pick, <laughs> I try not to do that because everyone asks, like, what's your favorite? And then I li- as you notice, I'll list like 10. Um, <laughs> this is usually not what they're asking for. Um, I, I'd say New Glarus is iconic and yes. beautiful. Like, going there in the summer is the absolute best. It's such a crazy, like, I always feel like when I'm going on a tour there, like I always feel like their employees are like in a museum exhibit because they're all like working really hard and we're, all these <laughs> tours are just like walking through. Just yeah, yeah. Staring at them. Really, yeah, <laughs> they're staring at them and brewing their, their beer. I also really love Point Breweries. Sure. Tour, um, just because it's so, like just the history there is so wild to me. Like the spec has been around forever and yeah, very different type of tour. Like it's not, New Glarus has the bells and the whistles, and it's like you're going there for like, whoa, you're at like one of the most iconic, you know, breweries in Wisconsin. Point's like a little more understated, I feel like, and I like that about it. And they gave me really, like the people there were so fun and gave me a big samples, which also is seared in my memory <laughs> in yes. a really good way. So, yeah, I'd say those are two that stand out. I have some work to do on the brewery front. front. I'm known for my winery, too. Like, I've got <laughs> okay. a yeah. lot of wineries. My yeah. co-host Eric, he tends to get assigned to a lot of the brewery yeah. segments. And I'll, now that you guys are asking me this, I'm like, I feel like he and I need to do a little swap here. I think he needs to go do some of the wineries because I've covered that territory. I mean, I need to do some of the uh, like Milwaukee breweries. Oh, yeah, for sure. That, that, that I mean, that's a few episodes in itself. Um, uh, as stated by one of our past uh, buddies, Adam Gruel of Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, uh, he is, oh, yeah. uh, he's also a point brewery guy. He loves point. He loves point. <laughs> he, like is Does all he? about it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Does um, he love the tour or just like he loves the beers in general? I think he's just, he's from point. So okay. it's sort of like the staple for them. Uh, it kind of, uh, maybe it kind of, uh, uh, an example of a, of a great memory that, 
you know, hey, this is what we know. This is what we love. And that's, I think that's the, the that that's Wisconsin. rooted. That's rooted. It's, yeah. it's Wisconsin. It's, <laughs> it's how so, we are. It's so us. Yeah. So. In Central Waters, I'm just remembering. Oh, like yeah. We did a piece down the road there, and Anello gave me, like, an awesome behind-the-scenes tour, and they've got a really cool taste. There's so many. There's so yeah. many. I will say the point area is where it's at. If it, if like, I tell people they're going to do a little brewery trail. The point area has really got it going on. Exactly. And Anello is fantastic. He's just such a great guy. Yeah, yeah. I love talking to him, yeah. honestly. He, so. he really is. <laughs> yeah, he was fun. But Mariah, they, thank you so much for the uh, time this Sunday, and uh, we hope you have a good Sunday. And thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. And if you thank need help, you. if you need help with the Milwaukee Brewery tours, we got you covered. Yeah, you better oh, hit yeah. us up. So, uh, absolutely. Yeah, we have to call in reinforcements for some yeah. right. You need help so, drinking beer. Yeah. We got you. All right, Mariah. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so you guys much. Have a good one. You All right, too. Thanks. All right, bye. 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 All right, that concludes this episode of Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. If you enjoyed this vulgar display of Wisconsin, please like and subscribe on whatever streaming platform you prefer. And remember to hit the bell on YouTube to be notified when we release new content. Also, if you have any suggestions or ideas for future episodes, please send us an email at widrunkenhistory at gmail.com or head over to our Facebook and Instagram pages. Thanks again for listening. And remember, as always, watch out for deer on your way home.